We've got to save this planet and our civilization. Let's not let the robots take over. Money is not the kind of thing you want to hold. This is what keeps the global poor poor. This is David Chong, a visionary computer scientist known as the godfather of crypto and the father of online anonymity. In his Berkeley dissertation in 1982, Chom pioneered the idea of anonymous digital cash, shaping the future of electronic payments. His work not only influenced cryptocurrencies, but continues to drive innovation at the crossroads of cryptography and economics. We spent some great time with Chom during this year's United Nations Climate Change Conference in Dubai. In our discussions, he told us about his latest projects, including Better Than Money, a protocol that aims at revolutionizing how value is exchanged. Here are the highlights you don't want to miss. I would love to start with with a personal question. Sure. What is that you are most proud of out of all these great achievements? To be really frank, and it's maybe a little bit uh, out of this, the, the realm here, but I did make a very fundamental scientific breakthrough uh, called multi-party computation. And it's a kind of thrill that you only get if you're really a, a, like a world-class leading edge scientist that stumbles on something that's really big. And so that was uh, uh, awesome. And I've received uh, this award of the best and most enduring paper of the last 30 years in theoretical computer science. Now, when you dissect that, Theoretical computer science hasn't really existed for much more than 30 years, and it's the first time they gave it, and it is a big deal. And it turns out that when I created this, it, it was kind of theoretical, very satisfying because, you know, it, it, it fully characterized what you can do with information security, but it now might really turn out to be the way to kind of tame artificial intelligences so that they can uh, kind of duke it out so we don't have to have uh, warfare or uh, conflict in the, in the physical world. So we'll be talking to the, today about better than money. Uh, I think it's still questionable whether there is anything better than money. I think there are a lot of things that are better than money, but let's, let's maybe start with the this criticism and what what was your journey to understand that money is not perfect and when um, you started thinking about this actively in the sense that you wanted to change it yeah well thanks you know I mean I've, I've been working on electronic money for 40 years really yeah. I've never uh, really realized how important money is to the global a poor and to the inequity, which is kind of really destroying the planet. I think the creating this polar, it's feeding a lot of the, uh, you know, fragmentation and polarization. So I realized it, it you know, this is the, th this is what keeps the global poor poor because money is not the kind of thing you want to hold because you're not, a, you know, you're not accruing value. You're, you're, is a kind of what I call, you know, like money slavery. Basically, you're 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 subject to uh, you're not investing, and then you're subject to inflation and and a possible collapse of currencies and so forth and so on. So, it's you know what I could say is that that uh, historically, really, you have two kinds of situations that people are in the public. One is there. You know, they feel like they're gaining prosperity, and there's the other kind of situation where they feel like they're not able to reach the kind of level of prosperity of their families, their parents, their the expectations they had. They feel like they're suffering uh, a loss of prosperity, and if you look at what those people do, it's it's very different. The one group defends democracy and, you know, and the, the free market and so on and so forth, and very vigorously and without hesitation, look at the last century. And then the other group, you know, look at like uh, Italy in the 30s or, you know, I don't want to get into all that, you know, this gets 
very, very uh, evil. And when people feel that there's no, you know, the system's not working for them, it's not working efficiently, they don't feel a, 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 the, a, a gain in prosperity for themselves, then they just give up power to the nearest, you know, entity that seems, you know, wanting, willing to take it. Yeah, let's delve at? into it. So what is better than money? Well, that's, you know, okay, and there's a little bit of puffery in that name, but I've, I didn't choose it, but many people BTM. Could use it. Yeah. Almost well, BTC, but BTM. Yeah, it's very close. And it, you know, so it's simply the idea that you can pay someone by transferring value from your portfolio of assets directly into their portfolio of assets. And that, uh, means it's not the the value is not traveling through money, but it's totally I say interfungible. It 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 it's a it's a universal medium of exchange, and so everyone gets to hold all their value in a, an asset portfolio to curate it, if you will. They can get the help of AI in curating it, which of course can make it be managed better than banks and others have managed your value for you in the past. So holding assets rather than someone else's debt who's sort of ham-handedly in a uniform way trying to one-size-fits-all make money off you, it's just so much more attractive. So when you want to do any kind of future payment, then doing it with a mutually agreed portfolio is so much better and it will lead to so much more economic prosperity. So decentralized ledger, blockchain, cryptocurrencies have, have made this step. The, the, the aim was to uh, decentralize, democratize uh, access to, uh, to investments um, and as a consequence, obviously, redistribute wealth in the world. So how bigger is the step uh, from the current cryptocurrencies to this better than money. I, mean, I, I love the blockchain space because it's it's a place where most, many people really believe strongly in the ethos and, and it's so inspiring to be uh, a part of it, even though it's, you know, of course maligned by some other media, you know, mainstream media from time to time where they find that uh, expedient. But the, so the truth is the better than money is just actually a slight incremental step above what the uh, fintech world has been building, has been aiming to build. And it's not all, you know, that public, but there are actors that have been just trying to tokenize everything. There's a vision for that. There's a lot more happening in that uh, space than you do, than you see. And the tokenization of these assets, that's I don't know, three quarters of better than money. The, the final part is a, is, a, is a way to create the, this interfungible immediate finality uh, in, in, in value transfer. Let's uh, maybe talk a little bit about other um, crazily ambitious ideas that you're working on. <laughs> I know. Just well, I'm not going to avoid the, that characterization, but uh, since we're at COP28, uh, uh, you know, we do have uh, the AstroCool project, and it's a very simple idea that I had. Uh, basically, you can simply move moon dust. You know, the moon is covered in 5 to 15 meters of dust, the whole moon. It's a very fine powder because of it's being pummeled by, you know, asteroids for billions of years. And you can move that dust to the, what's called the Sun-Earth L1 point, which is the gravity balance between the sun, which is massive and these, you know, the earth is tiny. So it's about 1% of the way uh, to the sun from the earth. And it, 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 so as the earth goes around the sun and the earth, you know, orbits and the moon is involved a little bit, uh, that point always stays blocking sunlight that would hit the earth. And so we've, uh, that was my idea to move the moon dust there. And it turns out that other scientists have thought of related things about building mirrors and stuff there. So it turns out you, it's actually feasible to, uh, to, to, cool, to bring the Earth to pre-industrial uh, temperatures, to reduce the average temperature of the Earth by 2 degrees centigrade by moving 
it's a lot of moon dust, but it's it's not as McKinsey said. Oh, it's going to take ten trillion dollars a year to you know maybe make a dent in all this. No, we can go back to pre-industrial temperatures from way under ten trillion dollars, and and probably uh, we can make a profit doing it because if you sift through all that moon dust to to launch it over to the L1. Uh, you're going to find some interesting stuff in there that you, with the same technology, you can also send it back to Earth and then you can kind of let it waft its way back down uh, with these existing technologies. So you can deliver these, whatever, you know, precious metals, the isotopes, things people are interested. Even if just there's water in moon dust, there's a certain moisture level and water on the moon is extremely valuable if you want to make conventional rocket fuels, you know, uh, hydrogen oxygen, but you can also use it, you know, to get oxygen for people and, and stuff. So do you consider yourself a scientist the first place? Yes, actually. I do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Sorry. How do you measure your success and how do you measure your your own satisfaction with uh, your thoughts and your scientific uh, activity? Well, I think that being judgmental is not really conducive to a creative process. You know, it, in when you're doing basic science, the things you find were already there before you were you got there. So you you really can't take credit for them. You know, you could take credit for your effort to find them or the fact that you, you know, have directed yourself towards these things of significance. But the ideas themselves, they were there already. So, uh, you, you know, it, I, yeah, I, I don't really, I wouldn't want to judge uh, myself by the quality of the things that I've achieved because I think it, it, they're things I've discovered. How do you see this, the, the better than money system can contribute to this elimination of greed as a, a very perverse concept, in my opinion, that is totally human right like animals do not have greed um or do you think that there is such an ambition do you have such an ambition with better than money to eliminate this uh perversities well I mean, yes i think better than money can naturally lead to a slightly more uh decentralized power and so a richer set of uh things that individuals can aspire to to and distinguish themselves with respect to we, we really have to um uh think of the world as being in a very precarious you know we have the liquidity crisis we have this, this the giving over of control to ai we have the global warming we've got a number of of issues and if we can you know we can do a kind of jujitsu move on that, take that energy, turn it around uh, with better than money and maybe a little bit of, you know, astro cooling or whatever and, uh, and, 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 and use that energy to make a, uh, emerge with a great civilization uh, that's, you know, you, you know, I think that this planet is a wonderful, wonderful place to live. I cannot imagine making something on Mars that would be m more beautiful and more fun to live in. You know, honestly, please, people, let's, let's be real. You know, we've got to save this planet and our civilization and all the cultural things that we've developed and the diversity of the, you know, the animals. And don't pay any attention to people who say, oh, we're going to, you know, we've got to leave here because maybe we'll be wiped out. No, let's fix the place up and let's not let the robots take over. Let's make sure this is a human-centered uh, civilization. And we can do it right now with, we got the privacy technology for it. And that's the kind of the thin edge of the wedge, as we say, that's the way in, and now is the time. I like very much this optimism coming from pessimism. I think this is the way we, we should use this energy. Uh, and money is just a tool, and better than money is just a tool. Um, I think it was uh, Jonathan Swift who once said that um, a wise man should keep money in their head, not in their heart. <laughs> so I would say that uh, better than money as well is a tool, right? It's something Absolutely. that is uh, an intellectual power 
uh, and then we should keep the happiness and equality and inclusion That's in our the hearts. That's the meaning of life, and, and you know, this, the, yeah. The, but we got to be just a little bit careful that, you know, it it doesn't the, the plumbing doesn't get away from us and and take over. You know, it's got it's got to serve us. I think it's a great note to end this conversation. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It's just so great, such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David.